Hi kids, happy Sunday. Wow, it's good to see you again through our Kids Church Online. Hmm, hari ini Mr. Prince nggak enak ya kalau sendirian ya. Ah, how about if I'm bringing you a friend of mine, right? Let's welcome. Hi everyone. My name is Michelle, and today I'm going to be sharing the Word of God with all of you with my friend, Mr. Prince. So welcome back to our second week of our new series, Possible, where we are learning that with God, everything is possible, and um, God can provide even in the most impossible situation. So let's start by reading our part truth and verse. Nothing is impossible for God. Okay, so now before we move uh, on with our explanation, let's start with prayer. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Um, dear Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity that we could uh, still listen to your word, even if we cannot gather here together physically. I pray, Lord, that you will give us the ability and wisdom to focus so that we could hear um, to whatever you want us to um, listen to you, Lord. And I hope that um, all of us can stay safe and healthy at home with our parents. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, today's setting is in the desert and uh, the lesson is about water. So before we start, let's uh, play a short game um, to, and let's see if you guys can identify these famous bodies of, wa of water according to the description. The first, uh, cl the first description is that it is the largest and deepest ocean. Can you guys guess? Well, if you guys answer the Pacific Ocean, then you're right. Okay, moving on to our second question. It is the longest and uh, it is the longest river in the world, and the, this is the river where baby Moses uh, basket was drifted. drifted. Hmm? Did you guys just get the Chiliwang River? I've never he heard of that, Mister Prince. Have no, you? I think they misread or something. You yeah. should ask them That's once again. Answer. Well, you guys can have another chance. Yes, and if you guys guess the Nile River, then you're correct. Ding ding. Uh, you guys are great at this. Wow. And for our third one, this one is not exactly a body of water, but loads of water came out of it. Hmm, this might be a little bit confusing, but you guys can find it at Exodus 17 verse 6. And this is what we will be learning about today. It is called the Rock of Horeb. So now, um, before we go to the, on to the explaining, let's watch this short video. Are you sure about that? I guess so. I mean, do we really have to do it? Probably. We've already spent our money for the week, and it's only like Wednesday. But can't we just ask mom and dad for extra? Will we give it? Sure? Are you sure about that? Uh, no. No, this is all wrong. Yeah, we don't even have any money anyway, no, 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 so... No, 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 it's not uh, that. We're questioning mom and dad's ability to provide for us. Oh, that thing. Hey, I remember that time where... Water, Moses, give us water. Why are you bully me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? If we were gonna die of thirst, why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? Go in front of the people. Take your staff. I will stand with you. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. I shall call this place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites did not trust in the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among thee? Man, that was a good story. 
But the real problem for the Israelites wasn't the hot desert nor the lack of water. It's that they didn't believe that God cared for them. Ah, that's true. They didn't trust that God would provide for them. And you should stop focusing on this, like, you know, coin box. It's just a coin box. We should... We should focus on praying that God would provide for us. Oh, I'll pray. All right. Okay. Let's pray. Um, Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you that with you, nothing is impossible, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you provide us with needs, Lord, for the family, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we will continue to trust in you, Lord, that you will keep on providing, Lord, what we need. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, what are you up to? I've got something for you. Okay, so last week we learned that God fulfilled His promise by delivering the Israelites out of Egypt um, because of their slavery from the servant, from His servant Moses. But this week we are going to find Israelites in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. And now, if you guys have a Bible with you at home, let's open it together and let's read Exodus 17, verse 1 until 7. Exodus 17, verse 1 to 7. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? The people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? So, now, Mr. Prince is going to help you to understand the story better by sharing uh, more of the story. Thank you, Michelle. Dari yang tadi kita bacakan, uh, kita melihat bahwa ketika bangsa Israel, they were in the time of need, their reaction, yang pertama, biasanya adalah marah. Yang kedua, mungkin kebiasaan kita adalah grumbling. Lalu yang berikutnya, biasanya kita menyalahkan orang-orang di sekeliling kita. Itu adalah reaksi yang biasa, yang normal sewaktu setiap dari kita menghadapi waktu-waktu di mana kita butuh sesuatu. Well, seharusnya kita seperti Moses. Ketika bangsa Israel grumbling to Moses, Moses came to the Lord. Moses berdoa kepada Tuhan. Moses tahu bahwa Tuhan yang bisa menjawab kebutuhan bangsa Israel. Jadi hari ini Mr. Prince mengingatkan kepada setiap dari kalian. Ketika mungkin kalian ada kebutuhan. Lalu kalian datang kepada parents. Kepada daddy, kepada mommy. That was the right thing to do. Tetapi... Ketika orang tua dari kalian tidak bisa memberikan apa yang kalian butuhkan atau inginkan pada saat itu juga Respon dari setiap kalian seharusnya bukan marah-marah atau menyalahkan orang tua Bukan, seharusnya kalian kembali ke kamar kalian Lalu kalian berdoa Kalian meminta kepada Tuhan Bahwa Tuhan kami ada butuh sesuatu Tuhan kami percaya bahwa engkau akan menjawab kebutuhan kami Tuhan. Jadi, sama seperti Musa, ingat setiap kali ada kebutuhan, kalian harus berdoa. And for the second lesson, 
I'll give it back to Michelle. Michelle? Okay, so um, um, now we are going to go to the second lesson, which is trusting God's ways. So, um, as you can see in, in verse 6, it said that um, God told Moses to um, strike the rock so that water could come out of it. Well, there are actually different sources of water. It could come from rivers, lakes, or oceans. But, um, God chose and make it um, to come out of a rock. Now, that sounds unbelievable. God could have told them to walk um, one kilometer left, for example, to find an oasis, for example, right? Now, that sounds possible. But God didn't. He chose something impossible. He made water overflow out of a rock only by striking it. Logically, that could not happen. But he still told Moses to do it, and Moses trusted, and he obeyed God. Unlike the other Israelites, Moses had developed enough trust in God to believe and obey him. And also, Moses did not just obey God. He did it instantly without trying at first. You know, you could think that Moses could have been shy and doubtful since he is doing this illogical thing in front of so many people, right? He could have tried it first rather than possibly uh, embarrassing himself if this didn't work. But the key is that he did it with faith and trust in the Lord, and that is why this miracle succeeded. And it's just like us. You would trust your friends so that you know best, right? When you have a good relationship with someone, we have more trust in them. For example, if I have a pet and I'm going on vacation, I would rather ask Mr. Prince to take care of it because I have a good relationship with him and I know him well, rather than just asking a random stranger, right? Because, and I bet that you guys would too. So just like Moses chose to trust God in that situation because he has a good relationship with God. And as for us, it's never too late to develop a deeper relationship with our God. God ha always has open arms for all of you and is ready to be in a deeper relationship with all of us. Now, God's plan already seemed impossible in the first place in the desert and even more impossible with a rock. Yet, nothing is impossible for God. And that is why we need to have faith and always trust His ways. Wait, Michelle, are you sure that God told Moses to strike a rock? To yes, get some water did. out of it? He did. Oh, really? Yes. Wow, actually, for me, it did not make sense, right? Exactly. Ah, but Moses chose to obey God. Yes, he did. Wow. Okay. Okay, I learned something, right? Yes. Wow, okay. What was it after this? The moral. Let's see what we can learn from this uh, Moses story. Ah, okay. So it's my turn, I think. Yes. <sighs> okay. Remember, two lessons for today. First, trusting God's care. Second one, trusting God's ways. Okay, Daddy. So when you're in time of need, do not be angry. Do not grumble and pray to God. Okay, and then after that, you should trust God's way. What does it mean? You should remember or don't give limitation to God. Jangan membatasi Tuhan. Aduh, nanti datangnya akan seperti ini. Nanti uh, akan seperti ini jadinya. Oh, berkat Tuhan akan lewat melalui orang itu misalnya. No, don't limit our God. Okay. Our faith and trust in God grows little by little as we continue to experience God's goodness and how amazing God is. Wait, think, wait, wait, wait. Hey, hey, what is what this? Uh, hey, what is this? Are you uh, have been cheating? Uh, no. Hey, that's a help for our friends there. Hmm, that is certainly not help. Well guys, that's actually the end of today's service. I hope that all of you are blessed by today's service and you guys can learn something from it. So, thank you all so so much for watching and we'll see you guys next week. Right, uh, right now, while I start, or I... Um, well, Mr. Prince running, hey! Okay. <laughs>